What's good? Brian Tong here and welcome to the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. This is my WWDC 20 hardware preview and really everything that we expect to see at Apple's keynote that will be live streamed by Apple on Monday, June the 22nd at 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern. And you also know that means I'll be having a live stream of my own right here on this channel around 9 a.m. Pacific time, starting about an hour before the keynote. You like that emoji? Okay, fine. Now I'll take your calls and tweets during the pre-show, post-show, the keynote, we'll do some giveaways. And keynote day for me is just always a really fun time to hang out with y'all and I can't wait to see you there. But let's get back to why you're watching. This is the hardware that we expect to see at WWDC 20. You can also check out my software preview after watching this one, but there's just a whole lot in here. So, hey, you know what I gotta say to you. Hold on to your butts. Now, the biggest story is that Apple will officially announce the long rumored switch from Intel processors to their own ARM chips for their Macs in 2021 at WWDC, according to Bloomberg's Mark Gurman. Apple's first ARM-based Macs will be released next year, and Apple eventually plans to transition its entire notebook and desktop lineup over. Now, Apple's ARM chips will be based on the same technology used in their chips for the iPhone and iPad. The plan is to unveil the new initiative at WWDC, and it is codenamed internally Kalamata, after the olive, Kalamata. See, I've learned a lot after I completely butchered how to say it the first time around. Kalamata. Kalamata, Olive. Kalamata. Now, the timing of this announcement will allow for a smoother transition, giving developers plenty of lead time to get their apps compatible with the ARM chips in 2021. The ARM architecture is different from Intel's chips that have been used in Macs since 2006. These transitions aren't easy, and it does make sense to start with a more consumer-geared machine to start this off, maybe something like a MacBook. Now, for professionals, the high-end creative apps, they tend to take longer to get up to date. You might end up even waiting a while before you make that jump, but this will be the first time in 36 years that Apple designed processors will power their own machines. I mean, this is just a huge historic moment for Apple. They're gonna really be able to control everything in the supply chain. They'll know the exact timing that can match up with their own timetables for product releases, and they won't have to depend on a partner that might move slower than they do for processor upgrades. Because if you go back to the past, we used to see speed bumps every six months. That just isn't happening anymore. And Intel's chip performance gains have also slowed trailing behind AMD at the high end. While German reports inside of Apple, tests of the new Macs with their own ARM chips have shown big improvements over Intel powered versions. And in fact, it was the A12X chip that was a breakthrough for Apple. That was in the most recent iPad Pro. It really showed them they had enough power and they were ready for the next level to jump to max. This is again, the same chip they kept in the iPad Pro from the last generation to this year's and it still hasn't unlocked really what it's fully capable of. Now, Apple's ARMS chips, they're also more power efficient, which could translate to thinner and lighter Mac laptops in the future. I'm not gonna get too optimistic here that they'll be able to lower prices if they are manufacturing the chips themselves. I would like to hope so, but this is Apple that we're talking about. But ARM chips and Macs, we've talked about it over the past couple of years, and Bloomberg says it's happening at WWDC 20. All right, now we like our hardware, and will we see at least maybe one new Mac at the keynote? According to Sonny Dixon, an all-new redesigned iMac will be announced at the keynote. Now, the new iMac is expected to bring an iPad Pro design language with Pro Display-like bezels, which means expect to see thinner bezels and you can imagine it kind of looking like a pro display on a Mac stand. That would just be a juicy design and it will have a new AMD Navi GPU for improved graphics, Apple's T2 chip to add new security and controller functions and there will be no more Fusion Drive. I'm really excited about the prospects of this new iMac. Earlier rumors have claimed that the 2020 iMac will bring its own Intel 10th generation Comet Lake processors, including a 10 core, Intel Core i9 10900K, that would be the successor to the current eight core chip in the current IMAX. And there's been no confirmation which Navi GPU will be paired with this processor, but earlier rumors pointed to AMD's incoming Navi 21 graphics that are based on their RDNA 2 architecture. This is the same architecture that will be packed inside the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. Now, Apple's Fusion Drive system is going away with this update. Dixon says we'll be getting new IMAX with solid state drives and if this all holds true, this is a big, big upgrade for the iMac and its new design would give this consistent look across the line if you're talking about iPad Pro, uh, the potential new iPhones, and now the iMac, this is gonna look really nice. But it gets me thinking, 
if this is the Mac, what are they gonna do for a new iMac Pro? That hasn't seen an update since December or 2017, and it is due, like like me getting a haircut. Come on, guys. Hey, Quarantong. All right, are you still with me? Yes, okay. Good to see. Yes, I think you are. Now, I mentioned how you should check out my WWDC 20 software preview covering everything that we expect to see in iOS and iPadOS 14 and watchOS 7 and more, but let's talk about some of the new hardware that isn't 100% confirmed, but is still rumored to potentially show up at the keynote. 9 5 Max spent extensive time with the leaked version of iOS 14, and it's revealed Apple's working on a new Apple TV box. It also is working on a potential new Siri TV remote. There's no word if it will even get any new ports or support for HDMI 2.1 or higher. Typically, we've seen Apple TV announcements around the spring or fall and not at WWDC, but can you guess the last time it was updated? Try September of 2017. This thing needs to get a refresh. I've also been talking about the AirTags. They have been one of the products that I really wanna see this year. We've been talking about them since, what, even before the iPhone 11 and AirTags are real. It's just a matter of when Apple wants to announce them. AirTags, they're Apple's location tracking tags that you can put on a keychain or attach to items. They're extremely accurate using their U1 chips ultra wideband tech. This allows it to locate items within five to 10 centimeters of where it's located, very specific. So you throw in the reach of the Apple ecosystem and then the hundreds of millions of anonymous users that can opt in to be part of the Find My program to locate your lost devices. The things you used to lose, you will not lose them anymore with AirTags, except for love. I mean, once you lose that, it doesn't come back. I feel like AirTags would pair better with an iPhone announcement since it has the U1 chip inside it. Not all new Apple hardware does, but we'll see because there is no word if they'll really show up at WWDC 20. Now, iOS 14, it's also revealed the first icons for Apple's over-the-ear wireless headphones, affectionately called AirPod Studio by the internet. That's not their official name, but thanks to those icons, we even got renders of what they could look like in real life, and those are pretty slick, if true. Reports have described these AirPod Studios as having the same quick pairing advantage as AirPods. You get hands-free Siri and noise canceling, but a potential new feature that has nothing to do with sound for the AirPod Studio would be head and neck detection technology. This would allow you to put them on and automatically detect which side is your left or right ear for audio playback without you having to look in the ear cup or on the outside of the headband before you put them on. I call that wizardry because I'm one of those people that just constantly has to look at them before I do that. Or let's say you just take them off, you hang them on your neck, the audio will stop playing. I love all of this, if it's true. Now, Bloomberg has reported that it could come in two variations, one using leather materials and the other with lighter materials to be more fitness geared. The icons in iOS 14 for the headphones revealed two color options in black and white. We will see if they make an appearance, but WWDC isn't really a place for a headphone announcement until it is. And let's not forget about the HomePod or I guess the potential HomePod mini. We're expecting a second version of the HomePod that will be a lower cost one sometime this year with only two tweeters instead of seven to help them be more portable, smaller, lower cost, just more prevalent as part of the smart home. Now deep discounts on HomePods for its original price point are now down to 199. They've been going on for multiple months from retailers, even half off price for Apple employees internally. To me, that signals that they are just trying to clear the channel of inventory to make way for a new HomePod and this reported second lower priced one. iOS 14 also revealed that HomePod may be allowed to use third-party music services like Spotify as their default service when using your voice to play music. Right now, you can use other services on the HomePod, but you have to do it manually over AirPlay and then through an app on your iOS devices or Macs. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but two things we know we will not be getting updates for at WWDC are the MacBook Pro 16 inch and Mac Pro. At least I'd be really surprised if we do since Apple just gave each of them a new build to order option online. So we have the current MacBook Pro 16 inch. It now has a higher end GPU option with an AMD Radeon Pro 5600M GPU. That's a $700 upgrade, but it brings a 75% boost in graphics performance compared to the base model. And then you have the Mac Pro. It now gets user installable SSD kit upgrades available in one, two, four, and eight terabyte configurations. So that is just everything that we know right now about hardware for WWDC, what we'll see, what we may not see, 
what we won't see at all. The big announcement will obviously be the big move to ARM chips in 2021. And then we are expecting to see new IMAX if the reports are correct. And maybe we'll get a few new hardware surprises. I mean, who doesn't love surprises? But that's going to do it for this video. Remember to check out my WWDC20 software preview as well. If you like this video, give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell ding, to get all my videos when they drop. Plus, if you want even more, check out my Apple Bits XL audio podcast where we just dive deep into these topics and more, and I'm completely independent. I would love your support at patreon.com slash Tong. It supports the podcast and all the work that I do. And remember... Apple's keynote, that'll be live streamed by Apple on Monday, June the 22nd, 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'll have my own live stream to follow along right here on this channel around 9 a.m. Pacific time, starting an hour before the keynote. That's a whole bunch of information. I said it twice, I said it thrice. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. Take care, be safe, and we'll talk to you soon. Peace.